Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. I'm Ruth Shelley, president of the Rotary Club of Portland. Welcome to our live weekly membership meeting. As you know, every meeting I've opened with this year's theme, Rotary opens opportunities. Yes, Rotary op opens opportunities to find solutions for today's challenges, healing from the pandemic, recovery from the economic downturn, and peace building as we seek racial justice. This week, we fo focus on door number three, peace building, as fellow Rotarian Alan Bazaz shares his life lessons through an international journey. But first, let's welcome Rotarian Nancy Wernicke for our reflection. Nancy? Whoops. Good afternoon, Rotarians. Um, just a year ago, January, before our country and much of the world closed down, shut down uh, with COVID, I spent a magical trip with my Rotary comrades to Antigua, Guatemala. I stepped out into a stunning explosion of color and culture the impact of my unending questions and developing relationships remains etched in my heart. Highlights include stoves, a few concrete blocks with additional metal piping for ventilation, creating a stove which could replace an open fire within the huts, previously causing smoke and lung damage and allowing for the first time ever tortillas to be made with an, without an open fire inside the home. Second, another agency making wheelchairs by disabled persons themselves, not only using them, but producing them for others. I believe I heard a cost ratio of perhaps 300 per chair compared to 3000 in the US, stunning. Third, Namaste, as we heard not long ago, a, a project helping women through microcredits developing their own self-sustainable businesses. And finally, the amazing school by the name of Maya, an incredible education system focused on a cascade of positive outcomes um, from addressing climate change to, to world prosperity and how it can be dramatically improved when girls participate fully in society. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. What powerful memories. And if you'd like to volunteer to give the reflection, Siobhan has put the link in the chat or you can email her directly. Now, I'd like to ask that Rotarians who have invited a guest to raise their real or virtual hand and Jackie will call on you to unmute and introduce them. Or if you're a visiting Rotarian who came on your own, please raise your hand and introduce yourself or let us know of your presence via the chat box. Jackie, do we have any guests? Good, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jackie Carroll. Yes, we do. Daniel Banks has a guest. Yes, I'd like to welcome back um, Kirsten Shank. Um, she's uh, interested in Rotary in general and has been visiting our club and uh, especially interested in our international committee. Thank you for being with us again today. Uh, Thanks for having me, Danielle and everybody. Great to be here. Anyone Thanks else? So I don't see anyone else. Thanks and welcome, Kristen. <laughs> We're so uh, I'm here, Funda Kelsey. Oh, Funda, welcome. Glad that you came. Thank you so much. Super. And Warren Banks is here. He's always quiet about it. <laughs> Visiting from the E-Club of Rotary World Peace. Warren, we're always happy to see you too. I'm glad that you joined us. And now I'd like to extend a happy anniversary to everyone who joined Rotary Club of Portland in February. 
We alternate each week honoring birthdays and rotary anniversaries for the month. Please note the names of these anniversary people and reach out to one of them with a call or an email since keeping up our memberships during this challenging time is more important than ever. Happy anniversary to everybody on the screen. And now please welcome Rotarian Kurt Martin to tell you about an upcoming March Madness fundraiser. Kurt? Thank you, Ruth. Some of you may recall around a year ago in the before times, we were planning to do a March Madness 50-50 raffle fundraiser for the club. And if you didn't know we were gonna do that, you know how it ended. Rotarians are persistent, so I'm here to announce that we're gonna give this another try. And now we have the details up here on the screen. We're going to do a $20 buy-in. We'll be able to pay at the rotarypdx.org website. That link is not live yet, but Siobhan said she'll probably have that up by the end of the week. It'll be in the spokes email that goes out on Friday. The group will be online only, so no paper brackets this year. I won't be able to collect those. I will provide the link to that online group. It'll probably be with CBS Sports. Uh, as we approach the tournament in March. So keep an eye out for that. It'll be in the spokes email as noted here in the third bullet, fourth bullet point, that'll be provided March 12th email. Like I said, it'll be a 50-50. So half the prize goes to the club and half will go to the winner. Invite friends, let's make let's get this a big group so we can raise a bunch of money. And the tournament, like I said, the tournament begins in March, it'll be March 18th is when it will begin. So just need to get your, get signed in and pay it up before then, and we'll be good to go. Any questions, I'll make an announcement next week. And if you have any questions, I'll, I don't have my email up here, but I can put it in the chat if you wanted to email me um, anything related to it. Thank you, Ruth, that's it. Thank you, Kurt. I'm so glad we can try this again. And please, everyone participate. Great way for you to win some money and a great support for our club. Now please welcome past president and past district governor, Rotarian Daniil Banks to introduce two very special international guests. Daniil? Well, thank you, President Ruth. We hope that you all have really enjoyed uh, hearing uh, from several of our international partners and about our multiple international committee projects. <clears throat> And thankfully, technology has served us well this last year. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce you to two longtime Guatemalan partners in the Coatepeque Club. Please welcome uh, Cesar Jose Lopez and Rafael Castaneda. Cesar uh, Jose is a past president of the club and is on their education committee, but he's also a former youth exchange student from our club. And uh, Rafa is currently the president of the club's education committee and is li in line to be a club president. So fellas, tell us about our joint project in your neck of the woods. Good evening. The Rotary Club for Guatepeque is located in the southeast of Guatemala. The Rotary Club has 20 members, and we have different programs that we are working now. A free dental clinic for kids, a free clinic for moral recovery for kids, global grants, but the one of the biggest and important program is the scholarship program. The scholarship program started in 1998 in Institute San Rafael Pacaya, then in Institute Santa Maria Naranjo, and three years ago started in Colegio Maria Auxiliadora. There are 23 years working with the scholarship program and kids that needed the help to continue their studies. We have proud of the students of the scholarship program, the history of success of the program included that there are students that now are doctors, lawyers, counters, teachers, 
nurses and bachelors business administration. Thanks to you, they are having the opportunity to develop skills, give better opportunity to their families, help and contribute to the communities from, from, the, better, uh, from the better future. Every year, uh, a group of Rotarians from Oregon, Washington, and other uh, districts come to our community to visit the schools. The students, teachers, and the club visit some farms, and they have very fun. During the visit, in January, all the schools in Guatemala start the school year. So in the visit, we give the students the school supplies. Talk to the teachers, parents, principal of each, of each school, and we have rural meetings, and we are talk about the scholarship, also the family dinner with all Rotarians. We enjoy of lodging from Oregon or Washington friends in our homes for days in the visit in Guarapeque. It has given the opportunity to exchange culture, experience to to know more friends and the most important help to community through friendship. This is a typical day in the visit of our friends. They uh, give the scholarship uh, supplies and we have the, the famous uh, in the morning visit one school and they, they have lunch and the evening visit another schools. Uh, I guess that they have a real fun and satisfaction for give the opportunity to the kids. On also, uh, after this uh, program started 22 years ago, only one student was graduated. So 22 years later, we have 1,023 students graduate. So it's very important. Uh, this scholarship program to us and to the kids. The normal budget every year for the scholarship program in trade school is $10,000. And there are 105 students in middle school uh, in trade institute. That is Santa Maria El Naranjo, San Rafael Bacayá, uh, and Maria Auxiliadora. There are 60 students. And to the best students uh, we have in in middle school, we give a scholarship uh, in trade school. In total, we have 23 students. And to those best students, we give a scholarship. Uh, and now we have seven students uh, so they can continue with uh, studying. Uh, the budget for the trade school, um, middle school, and university, the total is uh, $24,500. And thanks to your contribution to the scholarship program, more than 1,000 students have received the opportunity to study, to develop professional skills, giving back to the communities, and giving their families a better life. So the impact for the scholarship, scholarship program is positive beyond than 1,000 students. And thank you for your contribution, for your visits, and the love and support to our community. Thank you. So as you've heard all month and again today, exciting work is happening on the International Committee. Between now and the end of the year, we will be considering funding for at least five new projects, education and wheelchairs in Guatemala, emergency medical services in Nepal, microcredit in Ecuador, and community development in Colombia. So please, if we've enticed you even a little bit, please come to an upcoming committee meeting uh, or join us for one of our monthly happy hours. We meet on the third Tuesday of each month at 1045 via Zoom. And our happy hours, while they rotate uh, days and weeks, uh, they all start at five o'clock. We're grateful for the support that we've received from all of you through the Portland Rotary Charitable Trust. Thank you. Muchas gracias. And now a special gift 
Uh, Cesar Jose, as I said, was uh, one of our former youth exchange students, and he'd like to give a special message to our club. Cesar. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, I am very thankful for the, to the Rotary Club of Portland for the opportunity to greet the club and also to say thanks for the great opportunity you gave me in the year of 2000 for being part of the Youth Chance Student Program. Uh, thanks to that opportunity, I knew a different culture. I knew more friends. I was part of a, of a lovely families. And it told me to, to be a more independent person, to learn a new language, uh, to value family, friends, and learn and know more about Rotary and the importance of contribution to the community. After my exchange year, I went back to Guatemala to finish uh, high school. Uh, then I studied business administration in university, and then, and then an MBA focused on, on finance. And I became a Rotarian in the year of 2015, inspired by the experience in Portland, and also from my parents, uh, they have been a Rotarian since I was 10 years old. Uh, I had the honor to serve working in Rotary as past president of the club in Guatepeque, in the scholarship committee, and since uh, 2019 as assistant governor and Rotary advisor and working with, with global grants. In the professional area, I am working in a family company, and I am married with uh, Rita Cajas, and I have a lovely son, and his name is uh, Rafael or Rafita. I don't know if you can see it in the, let me, change something here. And thank you, thank you a lot for, um, for the opportunity to, to greet all the club. Uh, here is uh, Rita and Rafita. <laughs> Muchos abrazos y saludos para todos. <laughs> Gracias. Gracias. <laughs> Thank you, Daniil, Cesar Jose, and Rafa, and the guest appearance of your wife and son. How wonderful to bring the whole family to Rotary. And now we're going to disappear and enter a virtual table talk. Please introduce yourselves to others in your group. A meeting or a minute or so before you come back to this main meeting, you'll get a visual heads up. And in honor of international service, may I suggest a topic for your discussion? How did international travel change your understanding of people in another country? Or what did you learn about the customs in another country that you didn't know before you left the United States? Here we go. And now on to our program. After our speaker today is finished, if you'd like to ask Alan a question, Jackie will moderate the Q&A through the chat box. And now please welcome past president Rotarian Scott Burns as today's chair of the day. Scott? Thank you, President Ruth, and welcome to everybody. Uh, this month we're celebrating the International Committee and Al it gives me a great pleasure to uh, introduce my friend Alan Bazaz, who is going to be talking. And he is definitely international. Uh, and uh, he was born and raised in Baghdad, Iraq. And then for part of his college education, he came to the University of Oregon. And then uh, when he finished up, it was very difficult to go back. He stayed here. He got hooked up to a startup company. He went on to eventually own the company. And in 2006, then sold the, the company. He became very involved in Rotary. Uh, he uh, is involved in the Ro Rotary Club of Lake Oswego. I think one of the best clubs in the, the Portland area. And I've gotten a chance to know him through that. But I really got to know him in 2008 because a landslide hit his house. And uh, on New Year's Eve, uh, he, we had three inches of rainfall. The guy who was up the slope from him cut the trees down. They had a landslide that came down, blocked the road, caused another landslide that came down and destroyed Alan's house. And so the, it ended up as a court case. I was an expert witness in it. And so that's how I got a chance to, to meet him. Uh, and, and, and so um, as, as uh, he's been president of the Rotary, uh, Rotary Club of Lake Oswego, 2014 through 15. <clears throat> and uh, he's very interested in education and in peace, especially Latin America and the Middle East. He's been married for 45 years, got three great kids. 
Uh, and he is a perfect person to talk to us about life lessons and an international journey. How about a warm welcome to Alan Bazaz? Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Uh, that was a, for the nice introduction. And I wasn't going to talk about my house, but <laughs> you brought it up. Uh, so, and thank you, Daniel, uh, and the International Service Committee for the invite to speak to you today. In 20 minutes, I hope to take you on a quick personal journey that goes through my professional and rotary work and end with personal lessons gained from the experiences uh, that are relevant to today. So uh, I'm gonna uh, do the, so look at the graph on this slide uh, while I'm telling you uh, the following. 1977, I was recently married with one year old boy and was constantly thinking about our young family's future. As an electronic engineer in mid seventies, I was fascinated of course by computers and wanted to learn more, but there was something more pressing. Growing in Baghdad, I witnessed four military coup d'etats, the last of which led by Saddam's Ba'ath party. It could be because of that stage in my life, uh, but this new regime felt different. Iraq had nationalized its oil resources in 1972 and the country's economy was booming. I had a great job and our family's business was thriving. Yet government restrictions on employment choices, travel, movement, and speech were increasing. There were restrictions even on food purchases coupons were given by government to get in line for purchases of eggs, chicken, and other necessities. Very strange. One day, and against my parents' and friends' wishes, I decided it was time to leave. Applied to universities in UK and the US and landed at the University of Oregon, as Scott said. The idea was to study for a couple of years and see how it goes. There may be another coup and things get better. In April of 1980, and while preparing for my finals at University of Oregon, um, I got the news. My parents and most relatives were exiled from Iraq without their possessions or documents. The Iraqi government decided they were a threat as it was preparing for the war with Iran. There were half a million other people who found themselves in camps on the borders between Iraq and Iran at the time. So let's see. Graduate, I mean, th there were challenges in the new homeland. And um, I want to see if I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Uh, the decision to stay in Eugene, Oregon became uh, a no choice, but I, I uh, had to stay. I had no homeland to go back to. I joined a couple of people who were starting up a machine control company serving wood pro producers with a degree in electronics and now computer science, it was an easy fit. Fitting in the society, however, was a new challenge for me. For one, my English vocabulary was mostly technical and lacking conversational depth. To give you an example, we were invited one day uh, at my uncle's home and uh, his American wife was preparing dinner, asked if I was hungry. I replied approximately, meaning somewhat. 
then my wife, uh, a devout Muslim, uh, would have to adapt to a new way of life. I also had communication issues at workplace, but because of the technical nature of the work and only few people working at the time, those were minor. Staying here legally was another challenge. The company had to go through rigorous process that took months for a permission to work and then took years to obtain permanent residency. For, some, for someone who grew up in a land with no forests, the wood business was not on my radar, especially when in Iraq, homes are built with brick and mortar. However, I was confident in my abilities to build hardware and software for the company. Uh, the company introduced technology that produced more precise lumber, and increased milk profitability. The technology aided in using less logs and produced better lumber. Good for the environment and good for the industry. The background picture you see behind me is where our first installation happened, Eel River, California. One of the systems the company produced could measure a log in three dimensions, as you can see in the picture, with lasers and virtually fit the best combination of two by fours, two by sixes to minimize waste or choose the most profitable combination based on lumber prices at the time. In addition, the process of cutting a log is automated to gain production speed. For those who haven't seen uh, one, of these uh, systems in operation, I, I, I brought a video for you. Okay, let's watch. So uh, running a business, uh, often uh, I had difficulties uh, articulating ideas and viewpoints to employees and coworkers due to my language and background. On the other hand, I believe my cultural background was a factor behind the company's reputation for its customer experience. As a CEO, I ended up focusing on product development and international sales. It came natural to me. The company sold products to British Columbia, Quebec, uh, Europe, Russia, and had a representation in Australia and New Zealand. I've been there half a dozen times. In year 2000, an opportunity was presented and we decided to sell the business. I had to stay by contract until 2006, at which time I moved to Lake Oswego and retired. Now, regarding Rotary, in many ways, my story as an American success story is, is an American success story. The, the opportunities we had in our new homeland helped me realize my wishes for a better future for my family. Upon retirement, I decided to work. I decided to look for ways to go back. I'm sorry. Uh, after I retired, I was looking for ways to give back. 
after researching many organizations, I decided Rotary was the best fit for me. I called the Lake Oswego Rotary Club president at the time, Sharon Starr, many of you know her, and asked to join. She was delighted. Not sure of what to do, I joined every committee in the club, and sometimes two at a time, including international service. In 2009, had an opportunity to visit Guatemala by joining Daniel's contingent to Cuatepeque. I don't know what happened to share the screen sharing. Uh, why did that go away? Okay, back. Um, so in 2009, had an opportunity to visit Guatemala and join the contingent that uh, Daniil takes every year to Cuatepeque. During the trip, I learned about our two clubs cooperation in not only supporting, but actually creating secondary education for children in Cuatepeque. That was mind boggling to me. While visiting one of the schools, we were greeted at the door with school teachers and staff as uh, Rafa was uh, showing in, in the pictures. And this one very young teacher caught my attention. She was tightly hugging and kissing Daniel while tears pouring from her eyes. Turns out the young teacher is a recipient of our scholarships, which gave her the opportunity to obtain teaching certificate and teach at the very same school. That's when I got the hook of service above self. After serving as president of our club and participating in many international missions, conferences, and projects, I narrowed my focus to two favorite areas, education and peace building. Today, our club has an annual program called SASI to celebrate education success in Lake Oswego. We honor educators with awards that pay for scholarships and other projects. Our International Service Committee is focused on education for adolescent girls around the world. The program is called SAGE, S-A-G-E, and inspired by Nike's The Girl Effect. If you haven't seen, there's a video on YouTube called The Girl Effect. If you haven't watched it, I highly recommend you see it. So um, next slide. Okay, so now to lessons learned. So what's behind my focus on education and peace building? Well, both of my parents have had elementary school education, but they wanted to open opportunities for their kids and they had the means to do it my story would have been a lot different had I, had I not gone to college, had I been born in a village with no schools or running water, like much of the world population is today. Take another look at this graph. Um, in the 20 some years I lived in Iraq, I went through four military coup d'etats, as I said, and seen what a police state looks like. Wars have ruined the economy, killed millions of people, and reignited sectarian conflicts. My immediate family were dispersed around the world as a result. A Palestinian friend once told me, any idiot can start a conflict. It takes intelligent and thoughtful people to resolve things peacefully. Oops. Um, okay. So another passionate subject of mine is freedom and safety. Uh, 
COVID-19 has given us a taste of what it means to be restricted from being with others. Imagine if your freedom of choosing where to go, where to say, what to say, and what to own is taken away from you. Under Saddam Hussein, we could not own a personal computer, a satellite dish, or a cell phone. Most people were restricted from travel outside the country, and many found themselves in detention and torture for saying something critical of the government. One of my own friends was under interrogation for 10 days for cracking a joke in a cafe. I almost got in trouble for walking on the wrong side of the road one day, all under the guise of safety and security. Leaving Iraq when there was travel restriction on all engineers was an adventure full of potential pitfalls for me. The fear of journey left me with nightmares for two years afterwards. On the subject of bias and social equity, I would like to tell you that I was born a third generation Iraqi. I was always conscious of the bias around me for my Persian ancestry. Same language, same religion, same looks. But the one note in my papers was enough to discriminate against us. When my parents were exiled to Iran and the Iranian government accepted them, they were subjected to similar bias and were considered strangers in Iran. In the 2006 sectarian conflict in Iraq, people in Iraq were killed because their names sounded like a Sunni or a Shia. It tore the fabric of society to pieces and the healing will take generations. I bring these experiences because I think they are relevant to today's issues in this country. I will close though by saying that what we went through in the last four, four years in this country was very unsettling to me. I saw many signs reminding me of the time I decided to leave Iraq. I'm learning that peace, democracy, and freedom are fragile and require caring people to work hard in fortifying them. I find Rotary is exactly the place through which we can do that work. Thank you for listening. Alan, what a powerful story. Now Jackie will moderate our question and answers. If you have a question for Alan, please type, I have a question in the chat box and Jackie will call on you. Or if you will prefer, raise your real or your virtual hand. Jackie, do you see that we have any questions? Yes, Tamara Brown is up first. Sorry about that. I didn't have an actual um, question. I was just uh, wanted to say, Alan, thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, it was very powerful and heartfelt and um, I, can take so many things from your family story and the story of um, your journey here. So, and I know that that was really hard um, to one, go through that and then to, you know, share it with, with everyone. And I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And War Warren Banks, did you have a question? Look like Warren. Warren, did you have a question? I noticed your hand was up. No? That wasn't a hand. That was a thank you wave. Oh, got it. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else that has questions, please uh, either send me a message or just raise your hand or your virtual hand or your hand. Let's see. I think that might be it. Am I missing anybody? It looks I, like that's I must it. have been very clear. <laughs> so, <laughs> that, was a, that was a great talk. It really was really, really powerful. You, you were very 
clear, Alan, and I have a question. What is your current focus in Rotary? If you've been on every single committee and some of them twice, where, where are you focusing your energies currently? Uh, as I mentioned, uh, it's really two areas uh, that I'm passionate about, education, uh, especially for young girls around the world, uh, and uh, peace building. Um, so I do work in both areas. I travel internationally often uh, to do uh, projects in the Middle East and uh, as well as Latin America. That Those are the areas I'm most comfortable with at this time, but I, it's not, uh, not restricting me. And uh, peace building, we did, we did a peace village in Lebanon uh, two years ago, and I'm uh, passionate uh, with the racial justice group that uh, uh, Al Jubis runs on Saturdays or lead. We do, and we do have a couple. And runs actually. <laughs> <laughs> Go we ahead. do have a, a few more questions for you too. Okay, uh, some some <laughs> other people thought of things. Yes, absolutely. Wesley Harper. Oh uh, yeah, uh, thank you so much, Alan. Uh, really appreciated the scope and interest of your presentation. Um, let me ask you a huge question, and you can sort of take it uh, take it on as you wish, but. Uh, what do you see as the future of Lebanon and Iraq, and uh, are there hopes for stability and, and freedom? And, uh, and also, if you want to take on even more uh, thoughts about the situation in the whole Middle East. That, that takes uh, a, a maybe a coffee or a lunch uh, thing, so, uh, so we, we can sit down and talk, but uh, just Unfortunately, I, I don't have good news. I, I, my, my, uh, my crystal ball is dim for the Middle East, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. it, things aren't going the right way and I don't see signs for them to get better. Um, I'm thankful for the new administration uh, taking a different tack uh, especially vis-a-vis -vis, uh, hostilities towards Iran, and which which will uh, ignite the whole area. Uh, but I, I'm I'm still long term. I'm not very optimistic, unfortunately. That's all I can say for now. But I, I definitely would love to have coffee with you mm -hmm. and talk more. Thank you. That would be interesting. Thank you. Our, we have a next question is from Al Jubitz. Alan, I uh, was super duper impressed when you were president of the Lake Oswego Rotary Club and decided to take on a, a conflict within that club that, that lasted for the better part of two decades. And you resolved it. And I wonder if you could share with us that real, uh, that not necessarily the details, but the process you used to do that. Uh, process was really simple. Um, I, I did not get into the details of uh, the uh, mechanics of the conflict that we had, but uh, took the high ground of uh, the principle of doing the right thing to both uh, partners and uh, involved uh, people from both sides in uh, negotiations and discussions uh, that eventually resulted in a, in a new uh, agreement and a new way going forward. Congratulations. Next, <laughs> next question is from Daniel Banks. Thanks, Jackie. Uh, so, Alan, uh, you and I've had lots of conversations and trips. I think the group would find it fascinating to know where all of your relatives are spread uh, around the world. And also, um, the fact uh, folks should know, you helped uh, lead a small um, uh, group 
uh, to southern Spain, to Jerez, and have experience with Rotarians there, a little different from the Middle East and the U.S., and maybe you'd like to comment about the Jerez uh, Rotary Club. Yeah, I, uh, let's see, first, what was the first uh, part? Uh, we're saying? You, you and Fatma have, um, oh, the relative, my have relative. relatives in a variety of places. Right, actually, uh, I have one brother in, still in Iran, uh, one brother here, two sisters in London, uh, and uh, relatives all over the place. Uh, and Fatma, my wife, has uh, brothers in Holland, England, uh, Iran, Dubai, where else? Uh, they, they're a family of 10 people, so, so we're, they're, they're dispersed also. Um, as far as our trips, I, I actually led uh, one trip to, of Rotarians to Belize, uh, and Nell is on the call, and she was part of that, and we had a lot of fun while uh, looking at service projects, potential service projects. Um, but the, I, I lived in uh, Spain, southern Spain, for about a year, and, uh, and uh, I really enjoyed uh, being in that area because of his, its history. It's, there, there's a lot of Arab influence in, and Muslim influence in southern Spain, so I got connected with that, and uh, it was uh, the international conference, uh, Rotary conference in uh, our convention in uh, Barcelona, was it uh, Barcelona? No, no. Lisbon. In Lisbon, sorry. In Lisbon uh, that we uh, decided to get together and travel south of Spain and uh, with Daniil and Mike Caruso and our families and the club of Jerez, uh, where I was, uh, it's a town that I was uh, in, and uh, Scott may know that town. It's uh, where Sherry was actually created. Uh, the, the, and, um, and then we had a good time uh, traveling there and uh, meeting with the club uh, members there who are doing an amazing work. Uh, one, of the, one of the projects that they did is they built a whole hospital for Alzheimer patients that uh, costed about 4 million euros, uh, which, which was a, a large sum at the time. Anyway, and I think uh, our trip uh, wa was a lot of fun, uh, and especially the uh, excursion to uh, Morocco and back. And uh, it's just a cultural uh, thing to, to witness and see. So I don't know if you, you want wow. to talk about more. Yeah. We, we, have, we have time for one more question. Scott, you're up now. Great. Uh, how about your kids? Sorry. Yes, Didn't you hear. got three kids. Um, and libertarians. Right. Uh, my, my kids, I have three kids. Uh, one is uh, the, the youngest. Uh, she is a journalist at the Seattle Times in, uh, in uh, Seattle. Uh, she covers the education in the state of Washington. And uh, she is uh, my, uh, the jewel of the crown, if you would. Um, and uh, I have uh, my other son, who I have a, a, a grandson from, uh, lives in Camas, and he was, until recently, a manager at Hewlett Packard. And uh, my middle son actually lives with us, and uh, he is uh, uh, doing uh, his own uh, projects, uh, technical and uh, some not technical projects. So he's freelancing. 
that's about my three kids. And they're wonderful kids. I love them. <laughs> of course. Oh, it sounds like they are, Alan. Thank you so much. And thank you all for great questions. Next week on March 2nd, we'll be nominating our slate of new club board members, which we hope to have done today, but don't miss it. This meeting will once again be live via Zoom at noon on Tuesday. I want to thank our virtual guests today, Kirsten, Funda, Warren, Nell Diamond from the Lake Oswego Club, and Peace Fellow Andrew Stone. We're so glad you joined us. Nancy, thank you for your reflection. And to Neil, Cesar Jose, and Rafa, thank you for your insight into our International Service Committee. Scott, we appreciated your speaker introduction. And Alan, thank you again for your powerful and compelling presentation. What a resilient life you've led and what sobering examples of discrimination. You're so right. Democracy, freedom, and peace are extremely fragile. We're glad that Rotary was the best fit for you and we're all better for it. Now, as we enter into a new Rotary week, please join me in opening the doors of opportunity for healing, recovery, and especially peace building. As Rotarians, we're here to make our world healthier, more sustainable, and with justice for all. Have a great week, everyone, and this meeting is adjourned.